Oracle Java licensing changes in 2023. The IT world was recently shaken by changes made by Oracle in its Java licensing. And the feeling I got was similar to what Michael Corleone felt in the movie The Godfather when he's trying to leave the mafia. But he said, just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. And that's the feeling I had when I understood the changes to Oracle's Java licensing. Just when everybody thought that we figured it out, and we have reduced the Java licensing requirements and we knew what to purchase, Oracle changed the game again and sort of pulled us back into this uncertainty and where there's a financial risk for Java licensing again. What has happened? On January 23rd, Oracle published a new price list for Oracle Java. The two previous Java products Java SE Desktop and Java SE for Servers were removed and replaced with a new product called Employee for Java SE Universal Subscription with a new license metric, Employee. It is important to note that nothing has changed in the licensing agreements or what Java is required to license. The only change is the licensing metric and the product name that you need to purchase for Oracle Java. The new price list only contains one product, Employee for Java SC Universal Subscription. It has the same volume and discount stairs as the previous price list. The more you purchase, the more discount you will receive. But the price for Java SC Universal Subscription is five times more expensive than the previous license, which was the user base license. Yes, Oracle is including the processor license into this universal license. You might ask, are you going to get more discount if you purchase for more than 50,000 employees? Right now, we don't know. But we, if we can take the experience from the previous price list, Oracle was not willing to offer any discount for large purchases. They simply stick to the price list available on their website. What are the risks and costs for companies because of this Oracle licensing change? The change is frustrating because companies just spent three years learning how to license Java, what required a license, and coming up with a Java licensing strategy. And there's been several changes. One in 2019, there was another one in 2021, and here is another one in 2023. Companies have also spent countless of hours optimizing and reducing their Java deployments. And all of that time is almost for nothing because if you started out with a thousand servers or thousand processors of Java, and then you started to optimize and uninstalling and come down to 100, and you were planning to buy those 100 servers or processors, well, it turns out that Oracle now will require you to license the full employee, not only the actual users of Java. Some companies have wanted to purchase Java for a long time, but Oracle have refused to give them an licensing agreement because Oracle thought that the purchase was not big enough. And Oracle said that if you don't share all the deployment data with us, we're not going to give you a licensing order document. And many, many organizations refuse to share the deployment data with Oracle. And now it turns out that the purchase that they were looking to make one year ago is no longer available because it's though, because those products are not now removed from the price list. Companies that have already purchased Java are likely to be the first target of Oracle's sales teams and audit teams because they can quickly assess the existing licenses versus the employee count. The cost of Java have also increased substantially. For example, a client of ours with 32,000 employees previously paid 48,000 a year for their Java subscription, a mix of users and processors. They've now calculated that they are facing a purchase of $2.2 million annually. 